Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at Dawn of Battle by Worthington Games. And this is a remake of one of the ugliest favorite games of mine, uh, Ancient Battles Deluxe. So you can see my big fancy box here. This used to come in a plastic Ziploc bag, but I gave it the deluxe treatment by giving it a, a full cardboard box. And this is what the counters used to look like in the original edition. There was um, a, a base game, and then there's like four expansions, and each was like $20 or $30 each, maybe higher. But uh, Victory Points did them print and play. So uh, it was a really good game, but it just really didn't have the, the counter artwork that I felt like the game deserved. So, uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, let's do the gold treatment on Victory Point games. They went out of business or sold their wargaming division, but I'm really happy to say that they redid this game and uh, came out with Dawn of Battle. So one of the nice things that they did about this for me is that they kind of removed the melee system that was in place before, which was a little, uh, quite a few steps to do, and they've replaced it with a card system. So now you play cards, and you, the combat system is kind of built into the cards, kind of like a lot of the... Uh, combat commanders or upfronts and things like that out there but i haven't played it yet so i'm really excited about that system kind of coming into the game and hopefully it'll get more love this time uh, because the new pretty components and the new updated cards and things like that it looks like the cards have some sort of uh, historical event that could happen on each card too so we'll take a look at that just uh quickly we'll go with the rules later on we'll do like the box intro first a very nice uh, thick mounted cardboard map with the rules built into it. You've got the army panic on each side here. You can't even see that, can you? You've got army panic up here. Uh, you've got the rules kind of built into it, combat modif modifiers, the sequence of play. Um, army Panic for the red side, Army Panic for the blue side, and the tactical advantage. So one of the nice things about this game is that if you attack somebody from behind or on the side, you get advantages for that. Um, for the scale of this game and the size and the number of units that are on the table and the speed of play, this has a lot of advantages that I haven't really seen unless you kind of go to bigger scale type things. It's just, it's really nice. It plays well as far as uh, the tactical advantage portion and uh, I'm trying to make decisions based on what you got there. It is single-sided. Yes, it is single-sided. And then here are the new updated counters, which are really nice. Now, I don't know which expansions came with the new edition, but I know that the base edition had like four different expansions to it. And I'm kind of curious as far as how many expansions were included in the base game. It looks like there's quite a few counters here. And it looks like there's quite a few scenarios as well. Here's the scenario book. I think we've got about 20 scenarios or so. But very easy to understand. So the original edition had these cards that were very difficult to read. They're smaller. Here's the sample of the old um, scenario card. So you can see where they were, you had to place them, you had to find HA and put an M35. Um, let me see, you need to start. So you could kind of get a picture here, but it was kind of blurry, right? Um, you could figure it out. It wasn't difficult, but it was just always trying to figure out the facing, things like that. It just it was just hard to read. Um, the rule book was kind of small, so I printed a larger edition of it, which I got. And then uh, you had a card like this, which was your, your whole card, uh, playing a player aid for the game. Uh, worked really well, but uh, the new one looks really nice, so we'll get to that in a second. So here's the scenario. You've got your army, your units, how they're laid out on the battlefield. And here's your camp, and it looks like an open-ended deployment for the blue side. It's so very easy to see and understand the layout. You could probably have a game set up in five to ten minutes. And from memory, I'm thinking a game lasts about an hour. And believe it or not, there is a lot of tactical decisions made in this as far as keeping units in formation. And if you keep them in formation facing the same way, you're allowed to use one activation to make them all move. Once you start breaking them apart, it starts costing you more action points, and it gets a little more tough. Kind of like DBA. I don't know if you played that 
before, but like once you start breaking a unit into different parts, it costs you more actions to command the different sections of the unit, and it makes it quite difficult. This looks like a fun scenario. Got the blue guys surrounded, light infantry protecting the camp, heavy infantry, light cavalry. That looks fun. This is one of my favorites, Battle of Hatton. Uh, there's a YouTube video on the Battle of Hatton um, that somebody has created explaining the whole story of Saladin and how he um, went to a castle and basically uh, drew the guys out of the castle out into the middle of the field and uh, like started fires on the far side and smoked everybody out. But it was a really cool video. Uh, this is a great scenario to play too. Um, Callendale's done quite a few videos on the original Ancient Battles Deluxe, so I'm curious to see if he'll do some more on this one. So here's your melee combat chart to help you understand the, the tactical advantages and disadvantages of different units attacking each other, which is really kind of nice. Uh, again, going back to that DBA comparison where you've got different types of advantages for certain types of units attacking others, um, an attacking unit, defending unit, uh, the melee combat results and how that works, uh, the tactical advantages from attacking from the front or from the side or from behind, plus two from behind. Um, usually the yellow modifier is used for range combat in the original edition, and the red marker is used for melee. I'm not sure if that's changed yet or not. Here's some explanations of the card use and how to use the card for the command value. The melee result, uh, the result modification, a die roll built into the card, and the reshuffle icon. <clears throat> Explanation of the unit stats, the strength, movement, missile attack, range, and missile attack down here at the bottom right, missile defense here. Two player aids, which is nice. These are all copies of the same um, scenario cards that are in the book. I'm not sure why they gave two copies of it, but maybe it's just for easy. So you can flip them over and see there's two, two five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 20 scenarios in the game. And here's your markers. cards. So we'll take a look through some of the cards. God of War. Discard this card after your opponent has won the initiative to steal it. This card can be used to counter your opponent's attempt to steal the initiative from you. Back to Arms. Discard this card at any time to draw a die result. If the result is less than or equal to the best leader command value, restore an eliminated unit to the map. Place the unit within six hexes of the leader used but not adjacent to the, an enemy unit. The unit is disrupted, reduced, panic level accordingly. Confusion, Tragedy, the Oracle, Helios Abides, Strong Metal. So a lot of fun flavor text here, uh, which was not in the original, and I'm excited about playing this because I do like Commands and Colors Ancients and Combat Commander, different types of card games. And the fact that they've incorporated the dice into the... Um, the deck is nice, the new uh, variants here, and then also the melee results. Uh, there's a game called Battles of Napoleon that has something similar to this that you can use the card to kind of reference what just happened. And uh, it's it's really fun. I, I like the way that uh, impacts the game. Two decks, one for the blue, one for the red, and that is pretty much it. We've got some stands here. Um, really looking forward to getting this one on the board, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the unboxing and preview of the components. Take care.